And because of the way it operates, it makes a plethora of distinct noises and in general is just bizarre sounding. To manufacturers who are continuing to use this lighting setup, I have two words. Stop it! We can rest assured that a recording made with this machine will play on this machine, and vice versa. Do you want to manufacture compact disc players? Sweet! Just pay us an exorbitant fee, and then we'll give you the knowledge you need to build your CD player. Then we'll charge you a few dollars for each player you make, and then, and only then, can you put our coveted little logo on it. It does protect consumers, I guess, but most importantly, it makes us money. And just like all other standards, both flash and otherwise, SD uses a logo to both ensure and enforce compatibility. SD stands for Secure Digital, although I prefer to think of it as Super Dope. I'm fairly confident that this isn't a disc, but I'll ask my sources. Is this a disc? No, it's not a disc. Is this a disc? Yes, all signs seem to indicate that this is indeed not a disc. Well, that settles it. Two out of two sources agree that this is not a disc. Well, you know how sometimes a company announces that they're going to develop a thing, and then they put a lot of R&D effort into developing the thing, but it turns out that another set of companies is also developing a thing, and now you've got a situation of two competing things? Philips and Sony were backing an updated version of their very own compact disc, which they called the Multimedia Compact Disc, or MCD. This agreement was in large part forced by computer companies, who envisioned using this standard for data storage and who didn't want to pick sides and wind up on the wrong one. Same goes for USB. Do you see the pitchfork of knowledge? Then that's a USB device. Of course, Thunderbolt over USB-C along with power delivery is making this increasingly more confusing, but let's hope we get that sorted soon. But now that we all know, we can laugh at the follies of the past and be thankful that the standard endures, with one unifying logo letting us know everything we need to <sighs> Jeez, guys, how many more revisions are you going to go through? Won't you ever be satisfied? Isn't half a terabyte on your fingernail enough? I mean, really, we got 4K TV now. How much more data are we going to need? Why don't you just... Thanks for watching. Thanks to a rather well thought out text rendering scheme and the ability to show eight shades of gray. Actually, what's to stop the display from showing 50 shades of gray, am I right? <laughs> Does it really matter? No, of course not. None of this matters. We're talking about two dead formats here as if their pros and cons matter in the slightest in 2019. They don't. It's over. It's done. It's history. If you bought a beta machine, feel free to keep being smug about it, but you backed the wrong horse. Oh well, life sucks sometimes. Now, where's my HD DVD player? Pressing the eject button on this machine requires smashing your finger into the button like you smash X when playing Gran Turismo 3. Once you've hurt your finger enough to actually release the tray, the machine screams at you, GIVE ME A TAPE! No money spent on dampers here, no sir. In 1983, Sony released Beta Hi-Fi. Look at us, they said, CD quality sound on videotape. VHS will never match that. Guess what? They did, in 1984. Then in 1985, Sony released Super Beta, a slightly better picture quality standard boosting image quality by shifting the Y carrier, whatever that means. VHS will never copy that. Guess what? They did. Here's disc 1, side 1, and on the back is side 6. The fuck? To start to answer this question, we first need to answer a simpler question. What is a Switch? Well, a Switch is a handheld game- no. Well, we simply take its bare wires and carefully touch them to these live wires and voila! Let there be light! Now to turn the light off, all we need to do is carefully pull those wires apart and hope the live ones don't touch- but this is pretty dangerous. Even Edison knew that. But watch what happens if I take this space heater and unplug it while it's running. Ooh, that was quite a spark. Let's do it again. Ooh, let's do it again. Ooh, big one. Let's do that again. <laughs> let's do it. I see that again. While this specimen continues to be amused by the sparks, we'll move on to the next jump cut. Ooh. Sony's visit to the 1961 Ayee! The only thing that separates this drive from what's in the PlayStation are things. 
Okay, now the moment of truth. Did we push record on the camera? Because I'm somewhat doubting that I did. Oh, thank God. Which makes the next line particularly silly. And I think that's why it looks so convincing, as the two distinct wavelengths of light would produce an effect quite similar to that of real phosphors in a real vacuum fluorescent display. Ah! Just because this video is super short and off the cuff doesn't mean I ain't got any bloopers. Wait, this isn't a blooper, I planned this. But it is during the credits. Hey credits, is this a blooper? Aw, oh, farts.